In this video, I'll be discussing how operons work in prokaryotes. All organisms, large and small, need some way to control their gene expression. Otherwise, they would not be able to control what proteins they're producing and when they're producing them. This would lead to a lot of wasted energy and resources in the cell. Being able to control when genes are expressed based on when their products are needed helps the cell be as efficient as possible. In prokaryotes, one way to control gene expression is through the use of operons. This is your basic operon structure, a series of structural genes that share a promoter, an operator, and a termination sequence. In addition to these parts of the operon, a key player in the expression of these structural genes of this operon is the regulatory gene, in this case located upstream of the operon. The promoter of the operon is where RNA polymerase will bind to initiate transcription of the genes that follow. You can think of this operator as the stoplight for RNA polymerase, either allowing or preventing RNA polymerase from transcribing all of the structural genes. All of these structural genes are linked to the same promoter because they encode proteins involved in the same metabolic process. You can think of them as members of an assembly line, each with an important job in creating a single end product. There's not an instance where you would need one gene expressed and the others not expressed because they are all needed in the same pathway. It's simply more efficient for them to all share a single promoter and operator. The genes are either all expressed or all repressed. And then you have this regulatory gene. This gene encodes a repressor. As you can see, this repressor has a DNA binding domain, and this domain fits onto the operon's operator perfectly. Environmental factors can interact with the repressor to make it active or inactive. When the repressor is active, it will bind to the operator. When it binds, it can prevent RNA polymerase from binding to the promoter and transcribing the genes, effectively limiting structural gene expression. When the repressor is inactive, the structure of its DNA binding domain is altered so that it cannot attach to the operator DNA. Because the inactive repressor can't bind to the operator, RNA polymerase can effectively attach to the promoter and transcribe the genes. In this circumstance, the operon is expressed. So changes in the external environment or changes inside the cell can make a repressor change shape allowing the cell to adjust to changes by making only the proteins necessary in the moment. The most common example of an operon is the LAC operon, which contains structural genes that encode enzymes that help break down lactose. When lactose is absent from the environment, the repressor is active and the LAC operon is repressed. This means that the structural genes are not expressed. This prevents the cell from making proteins to break down lactose when it doesn't actually need them. When lactose is present, the repressor becomes inactive and the lac structural genes are expressed, producing proteins necessary to break down the lactose in the environment. In this way, the presence of lactose induces the operon, leading to lac gene expression. So there you have it. Operons are key to helping control protein production in prokaryotes. If you're interested in learning more about operons, see my videos on the TRIP operon and the lac operon.